first interview with uh, a man of many talents. Uh, he is a rock star. Uh, and I mean literally, he plays the electric uh, guitar in a band in front of a crowd. Uh, he lives was like... Years ago, years ago. <laughs> oh, years ago, okay. Let me do the introduction, but yeah, that's fine. He, li he lives like a beast, he goes to the gym every day, right? Uh, he is a real estate agent, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, near, near 10 years now? Uh, we're looking at seven and a half years. Seven and a half years, okay. Uh, Alan Kalimbus, thanks for taking the time, uh, you know, being um, having yours, I mean, being in the circumstances you are right now and <laughs> doing this. So, uh, yeah, first, thanks, let's thanks for start. Me on the show, buddy. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. I mean, the, hopefully, this is going to go for, for more than uh, just the one episode. I, I mean, this is what we struggle with as a real estate agents, right? Trying to be consistent. Sure. But yeah, um, so let's start first with telling who is going to watch this, where you are, why you are where you are, and uh, yeah, let's start with that. So tell us. Um, so right now, currently, I'm in Vancouver, but I'm actually at St. Paul's Hospital. I've been here since Saturday when Lionsgate Hospital had to uh, transfer me via ambulance to St. Paul's. And uh, I asked them why they were transferring me, because uh, I apparently cleaned out all the blood they had for all the transfusions I needed there. And my hematology department is actually um, from St. Paul. So it's actually better that they have their eyes on me and they're, you know, making sure I'm not up to any no okay. stuff, right? All right. So, I mean, you are doing better. I just, that's what I asked you. So you're fine, right? You're, you're getting better. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting better. So every day is getting better. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing, I mean, I'm here on the show. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> great. So I wanna I wanted to ask you this. I mean, t tell tell us about yourself, right? Um, uh, where were you born, um, and uh, what kind of journey you went through? Like, what were you doing before being a real estate agent? What made you uh, to become a real estate agent? Like, was it a person? Was it like a story? Were you seeing? all like uh, hotshot realtors on bus stops, bus stops that were like, oh, you know what, I can do better, I can be that person, you know what, and then, um, yeah, then by yourself, so yeah, go on, please. Sure, um, so I was born in Toronto, uh, I moved here with my family at a young age, uh, and yeah, I've been living downtown area now for over 20 years, but before real estate, I was actually a touring musician for about 10 years, so I played music, um, toured all over Canada and the States a little bit too, so did that. We had distribution and deals all over the place, so we were getting airplay in different countries, et cetera, et cetera. We had, you know, songs and movies and stuff. But um, at the same time, I was also working for, you know, some really big artists who, I mean, one of them was Noah Jones, who was a, you know, very, very big established jazz singer. So I was her tour coordinator for a bit, amongst other big artist but uh, yeah music was my life for a long time and then after when I finally decided to step away from that I was running nightclub so working in the nightclub industry as well so hmm. before I got into real estate I was actually running nightclubs so I've always been in that capacity where you know forming relationships with clients customers all that kind of thing hmm. fantastic now, yeah 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 so quite a different background to real estate hmm. right yeah, very so, different. Very, very different. But I mean, the skills kind of, they cross over. So when I decided to get into real estate, it was uh, one of those things where me and my ex at the time we were together. Um, it's a long story, so brace yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can you hold so, the microphone a little bit closer, please? Oh, can you not hear? Uh, uh, your microphone just where you, where you have on your um, it's the other know. side. I don't know. If, is this a microphone? Can you hear me better? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. <laughs> okay. So uh, how I got into real estate was uh, when I was with my ex and running nightclubs, you work like 70, 80 hour weeks, right? So my ex was getting lonely. I was never home. I was working all the time. So she wanted to adopt a dog so she wouldn't feel lonely. That dog had a lot of issues and that dog needed his own therapy dog because of all the struggles he had been through abuse or whatever it was beforehand. So because I worked so much, I never saw my ex or my girlfriend at the time. 
And what happened was that I came home from work one day, it was like 6.30, 7 in the morning, all her shit was gone and the two dogs were waiting by the door. And my hours at the club, I'd work till 6.37 in the morning, but I'd be back there at noon. So I was never home. I worked like 70, 80 hours. Now, hmm. I adopted these dogs to give them a better life and there was no way I was gonna abandon them again. So at that point in time, I'm like, I need to change my life. She's gone now. There's no one to take care of these dogs we adopted who were abandoned initially. I'm not gonna abandon them. So I decided to get into real estate. At that point in time, that's what made me get into real estate. I've always liked real estate. But this was the, you know, the thing that pushed me in that direction. I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. Let's do it. And that's how yeah. I changed my career. So dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rescuing dogs and not wanting to abandon the ones that I did rescue. And oh. I promised to give them a better life. I mean, I've always been interested in real estate. Yeah. Uh, but this was like the final thing that pushed me to get out of this industry and into real estate. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, story, and I know that you're you're very supportive of um, you know rescue dogs, uh, the ones that don't have uh, family. That's a really big passion of yours. I really, really admire you for that. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of you know sacrifice, a lot of resources to to like just say you know what I'm gonna I want to bring this you know uh, this guy into my family, into my dynamic of life, and then you know. Uh, support him so like it's 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 a it's a big uh, big thing big thing you're doing I mean all power to you for that Thanks. so Thanks. Thank you. yeah yeah uh, what so let's let's get into some like a little bit of real estate question I guess I mean I am I, I this is what I wanted to say I was like oh, let's get into real estate but then later I was like you know what people are more interesting and in talking about what they like what they're passionate about you know just like we said about your dogs and what you like about so let's let's ask this. This is what um, I think a lot of uh, realtors who probably would watch this would want to know. There's something you're you're very uh, you know passionate about is the client base, the people that you want to work with, your tribe, right? This is something you always talk about. This is one one thing I kind of realized later when I got into real estate was like later okay, I was like you know what I can't really work with ev everyone. I gotta, I gotta find the people who I can, you know, uh, work easily with and 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 have more energy to serve them better, and then not just go out and work with anyone. So because that's gonna, they're gonna drain my energy and uh, my resource and all that stuff, right? So tell me, how, what, what kind of client base you have, and uh, how you accomplish that, and um, what what kind of uh, I think how real estate agents like new real estate agents should get into. Um, you know, accomplish that kind of client base? Sure. So, I mean, obviously when I first started in real estate, you're just trying to gain business, right? So you're kind of trying to be everybody's agent. So you're trying to be everything to everybody. And what I found down the road, getting more experience is that's actually detrimental to your business because your authenticity isn't, you know, fully genuine. You're trying to be this to this type of client trying to be this to this type of client. And what I found down the road is that that does drain your energy. You can't be like that 24 seven. So after learning all that, it's like, okay, I'm doing well now, I'm getting a lot of business, but it's like, there's a lot of type of clients who I just don't jive with that I just don't click with. And I don't wanna waste my time on them and I don't want them to waste their time using me when I'm not in it 100%, you know what I mean? And what I found is that if you pick the type of clientele niche that you want to work with, it will always be fun. It will always be something that you're super 100% passionate about and you will you know, be able to sacrifice more to give them exactly what they want. Because I mean, if I can't go out with my clients now for a drink or just a good time, I know that that's just not the type of person I want to work with. Yeah. And uh, right now, I mean, I have a lot like a, a wide range of clients, but I have started to pare down who I'm working with. And even like the beginning of this year, I didn't really do that much work because I was in the middle of two renovations. I was doing moving, I was doing a bunch of stuff. I only retained some clients and I referred a lot of the business out. And I really kept the ones that, you know, I could go out and hang out with. I can have a good time with. And like Ryan Sirhan said in one of his books, it's like people, don't like shopping for homes, they like shopping with friends. 
And that's how I look at all my clients. They're my friends at the end of the day. I have a good time with them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If I can't have a good time with them, or I don't see them that they could be a friend, yeah. I just think I'm wasting my time and their time. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, were you, were you trying to just do whatever you think you have to do that is defines you to find those people? Or were you, like, trying to understand that, like, those people adore that audience or that, you know, your, your client... Uh, avatar to say you know what what kind of what can target those people like were you just what what that was or was just uh, was that found like organically or were you doing something di- particular like particularly different that was targeting those kind of people yeah I mean at first I was just getting a lot of those referrals and a lot of people that I knew through my years in the nightclub industry and all this other stuff but now that I'm you know like certain that there's a type of client I want to work with I know that there's a lot of people in that category that I haven't reached out to or it hasn't been on top to me yet, right? So now, for example, this niche type of client that I really love working with, I hold quarterly seminars for. I teach them exactly how they can qualify for a mortgage because they're young entrepreneurs in an industry that's basically frowned upon in society. I won't say what it is, but mm. I mean, it's they're, they're their own entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. And but what I've learned through working with them is that a lot of people just laugh in their face when they, you know, want to pursue the dream of owning a home. Yeah. So and a lot of these people are my friends or people that I've worked with in the past in the nightclub. So it's like, you know, what? if I can help them and I get along with them all well, I love partying with them all the time. Mm. If I if I get along with them well and I can teach them something, there is such an untapped market there because no one else caters to them. And yeah. that has been very beneficial to my business because it's like an unending stream of these people mm. who don't get service at all by anybody. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you can definitely organically get it just by portraying who you are, mm. but you can also unlock more of that type of clientele by targeting what you're doing out there, showing to the public what you're doing and yeah. really, really finding what is missing for them? Mm. What mm. do they not know about and how can I help service them so they can move forward with their careers or with their personal lives or with owning a home, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and I think it's just uh, to do with, with being different, right? It's like whoever uh, thinks about coming, like becoming a real estate agent or coming to, to this career, they're like, there's some kind of uh, portrayed pictures like, you got to do this, you got to do that, and you got to keep the, I guess, the prestige up and high and, and you know, very professional. I mean, prof- uh, being professional is no doubt needs to needs to be, you know, always in front. But, um, but like being different, I guess, is like when, when you when you are different, then you're hitting those kind of people and, and you know, like uh, telling them that, you know what, this this is what kind of person I am and I, you know, I want to do business with you, right? So I think like a lot of, I, I, I try to do is just trying to be different. Yeah, being different, and when we say being different, I mean, what I really try to aim is authenticity, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that my story is, like, different from your story. It's different from most realtors' stories. But the big advantage that I have now after what I've learned is that I'm not going to shy away from it. Yes, I'm very professional, but fuck, I like to have a good time, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like to go out and get trashed with my clients. I like to go party till whenever the sun comes up the next day, but I will always have their best interests in mind. I am fueled with the knowledge of how to do things ethically, how to get the job done to save them the most money or earn them the most money. I know how to do all that. Now it's about connecting with the type of person that I want to connect with and how I can show them our relationship is is a benefit. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right, so let's uh, let me ask you uh, this uh, couple of next questions. With uh, tell me about your first deal. What was your first? I mean, uh, probably everyone should know their first deal. I know my first deal. I know how to, and I have the whole story about it. What What was your first deal? My first deal came very quick. So uh, it was the second day of me having my license. I wow! Got my first deal done. Yeah. So it was a pre-sale out in Surrey. And it was a townhome. This was back when, you know, like a three-bedroom townhome, 
it was a pre-sale was like 300 let me let me get, yeah, how much right? how much was it i was, I was going to try to guess <laughs> yeah yeah go guess go guess so know. how long ago so this is a townhouse pre-sale in surrey uh when was it 2016 2016 yeah six seven hundred not it even close 389,000. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it was 389,000. Um, and yeah, we got the deal done. It was a pre sale. But uh, yeah, it was the second day of having my license. And I was very fortunate because, I mean, off the record, she had reached out to me as a family friend. And she was like, I'm looking for a home. I know you don't have your license, but can you just keep your eye open? I'm like, and I, obviously you're so excited. It's like your first client. Oh my God, I don't even want my license. So I'm looking every day for her, looking every day. Wow. And I already had the perfect one for her so that when my license changed over, they actually were starting sales two days later for these townhomes. So mm. I had it all set up. I, you know, we went to the show home, signed the deal right there and everything just went smoothly. And I'm grateful for that because I mean, after that deal, it took another few months to get another deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you still in touch with them? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. 100%. Uh, and uh, did, did they sell or are they still, they still on oh, the place? Still on the place. Still on the place. They still love it. So yeah. I'm excited. And, I mean, it's such a great deal, right? Because now, yeah. I mean, I think the, if I remember correctly, it was like 2,100 square feet. Yeah. So 2,100 square feet for like sub 400,000 in like a nice prime area. They could probably sell that for quite a bit now. Yeah, if they want to sell, what do you think they're gonna sell for? Or if you if you have to sell for them, how much would you price it? Oh, now? I mean, I, I obviously I have I'd have to look at the comps, but they've made more than double. Yeah, definitely. They, it's it's yeah. it's uh, as appreciated for sure. So, yeah, um, one one success story uh, was like a kind of a aha moment. It was like God, oh oh man, I did that. You know, like how's that how's that possible or something like that? Do you have such thing yeah i mean so i've always been one of those guys who you know will try different things and try to formulate strategies outside of the box right and i'm not going to give away my secrets on air but i mean i will always try things to try to either save my clients money or earn them the most money right so i formulated this one strategy and i'm and it was one of those things where you had to know exactly how the whole process works. So I talked to banks, I talked to all the mortgage brokers, and I wanted to make sure everything I was saying in terms of it being a negotiation tactic made sense with the banks, timelines, what exactly they say to people. So it took a lot of research, but once I kind of formulated the strategy, anytime I would go into a negotiation, I would do it. And I think I've used it 18 times and 17 out of 18 times it's worked i'm not going to give it away here <laughs> i'll tell you i'll tell you one day behind the scenes because once i tell it people are going to be like if i ever go up against that agent they'll be like i know what the fuck he's doing, I know what he's doing. i'm not all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna come see you probably hopefully today and get yeah, that yeah, yeah, for sure. secret 100%, sauce 100%. <laughs> all right um i think we could uh uh, kind of wrap it up here is uh, uh, we had a good talk. I mean, thanks for, I mean, so uh, your, your kind of people, tribe, um, and, uh, you know, just try to try to be different, I guess, in a way. Um, and, I, I wouldn't um, even say be different. I, I'd say be authentic to yourself, right? Authentic. I mean, the biggest thing with me is that, again, in early in my career, I tried to be everything to everybody. Yeah. And that's not sustainable, first of all. Second of all, yeah. it's like, you, you're not having fun. Like I have so much fun with my clients now, so yeah. much fun. And it's like anytime, I mean, I still deal with referrals and there are those odd people that, you know, maybe I can't go for a drink with them, but I turn down a lot more business now than I ever have before. And it just, yeah. you know, it wouldn't be a good fit and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Right. Uh, I'll give you an example here. I mean, anytime that someone comes up to me, they're like, Oh, we got a referral. We got your name. But just so you know, I'm also interviewing two or three other agents. And right up front, I'll be like, you know what? That's okay. Yeah. Go with them. I'm not yeah. going to die for you. It's all good. I don't need to compete, nor do I want to. 
if you yeah. got a referral and they gave you their opinion of how their experience was and it was positive and you still want to see somebody else, then obviously maybe you're better off to go with somebody else. Because if you don't trust you, what your friends are saying, how would yeah. I ever know that you'd ever trust me? Mm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. You uh, nuggets, nuggets. You're all nuggets. A lot of nuggets going around now. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, so recommend one book, one song and one movie. Okay. So I mean, one book that, you know what? Here's a funny thing. I never really read books because I, I didn't Same. I was just, I was diagnosed like three months ago with adult ADD. And I had a hard time reading books because my mind wandered to like 18 different places. So I started doing audiobooks, and that's the only way I really got information in was audiobooks. But mm. my favorite audiobook uh, was actually Sell It by Sirhan because it's like I knew kind of the backstory of like his, how he did everything. And we're very similar in a way that it's about meeting people and like being true to yourself, et cetera, et cetera. But Sell It by Sirhan was a great book for me to realize that I was doing shit that I didn't need to do. Mm. And what I really needed to do was focus on these certain things and being true to myself, right? So that one was a turning point for me and really shaping my business. Mm. Uh, song, uh, oh God. I mean, obviously I come from a background of music, but I'll tell you one song that I can't stop listening to right now is, uh, the artist is Lights. So she's Lights? Canadian. Lights, yeah. It's a song called Dead End by Lights and Myth. And she is one of my favorite artists. She is unbelievable live. Uh, mm. And she's an unbelievable songwriter. But uh, yeah, if anyone gets a chance to listen to that song, Dead End by Lights, bah. I just nonstop on repeat for me. Fantastic. One movie? One movie. Oh my God. Okay. The latest movie I watched was Air. What a Air. Thing amazing movie yeah about michael jordan's shoes oh yeah yeah, yeah that one about nike yeah yeah nike yeah. and michael jordan how yeah they exactly. rose from the ashes exactly so that that one was awesome uh a movie that i want to see because i think it looks hilarious is cocaine bear <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, cocaine Air is what bear? I yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> interesting fantastic uh thanks alan thanks for taking the time uh, you know, especially in, in your uh, conditions and uh, doing my first interview. This is interesting. I mean, this is my first interview. I'm, I'm, I very much like it. I <laughs> love it. Awesome. awesome. Thank you for having me, man. And uh, again, you and me have such a good relationship. I love it. The office relationship we have. We got to definitely shoot more stuff together, more content coming. But uh, yeah, man, I, I look forward to working with you in the future on, on different projects. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks.